Hi, I'm Peter Woolley, and today I'm going to be painting up from the second of the sketches that I made on my climb up to Greasedale Tarn in the Lake District. I have my source material to hand. I've got my line and wash sketch that I made at the time. I have a pencil sketch that I've made since then in which I developed and explored the subject. And I have a photograph that I took at the time. So I've drawn my painting out using a light, weak, burnt umber and um, I'm ready to go. I'm going to begin with the sky. And this is going to be a wet in wet wash and it's going to consist of cadmium yellow, cadmium red and French ultramarine. I begin by wetting the sky. I'm going to take it down to the edge of the hillside, but I'm going to take it over the distant hillside. I have to make sure this is thoroughly dunked, because it'll be drying off as we speak and soaking in. Okay, change brush, slightly smaller brush, but I, I like to use a nice uh, big flat brush for this kind of a wash. It's a one inch easy flat brush. I'm going to take some cadmium yellow for a start. There we go. And just work that into the sky. As I say, I want it to be quite loose. Uh, I don't want it to be too extravagant or too complicated because I don't want it to detract from the rest of the painting. I just want it to set the mood. That's my cadmium yellow. I'm going to take some cadmium red now. Work that into the, the wash. When you're doing a wash like this, it's important for the board to be at a bit of an angle. You should be working at an angle anyway, but if you're working at an angle, you know which way the paint's going to flow. And finally, a little bit of French ultramarine. I don't want too much of this, just a hint of it in the top corner. Again, work it into the wash. Now, I'm going to switch to a, a round brush and while I've got those paints mixed and ready in the palette, I'm going to bring those colours down into the water. This time, I'm applying it to dry paper, so I'll get a little bit of what we call dry brush technique. It just catches the top of the, of the texture of the paper. I want a bit of a highlight there. I'm using a number 16 round brush for this. That's better. That's bring, that's the cadmium yellow. So I bring the cadmium yellow down. Switch to the cadmium red. Just work it in there. As I say, it's a good idea to do this while you've still got the paints in your palette so you don't have to remix them later. That way they'll match up. And the French ultramarine, a little bit. Just in the foreground there. There we go. So that's my sky established. I need to leave it to dry for a few minutes because it's a wet in wet wash and it carries on working right up to the last second and uh, we'll uh, resume just as soon as it's dried. Okay, my sky has dried now and I'm ready to start painting in the hillside. For this I'm going to use some raw sienna and I'm going to mix in some burnt umber with it and then I'm going to apply some shadows to the whole scene using French ultramarine and it'll all hopefully happen in one swift manoeuvre. All right, so let's start off with the raw sienna. Nice big brush, big size 20 round brush. A nice rich mix. Ooh, I love raw sienna. It's a bit like yellow ochre, but better. Okay. That's a nice, nice rich color. Let's get this pretty much all over. I'm gonna leave a few little random highlights here and there, 
just to suggest rock. So some crags over there, which uh, I will come to all in good time. There we go, let's just get that colour on there. So this is the raw sienna. Lovely creamy colour. And ignoring the background hill, I've got a background hill there, Saint Sunday Crag, which I'm going to put on last of all. There we go. Okay. I'm going to mix up some burnt umber. Not too heavy, something will be too heavy. I just sort of work that in there just to suggest contours. I've just switched to a slightly smaller brush for this. switch back to the um, raw sienna there just for these grasses a few long grasses just in the foreground I have got some rocks which I'm going to paint in a moment to the French ultramarine which I've already got in my pot because I've used it in the sky add more paint to it there we go and I'm really using this to try and give a sense of shape to the hill. I'll be adding more precise details in a moment, but this is just to, just to establish roughly the shapes that are, that are going off there. Again, a little bit of the French ultramarine there, just to give it shape. What I'm going to do also now is I'm just going to bring a little bit of that down into the water. I don't want to overstate this because the water is actually quite choppy. So you won't get a mirror-like reflection. Let's use the finger there a little bit just to drag it out a bit. So now I'm going to leave it to dry just for a few more minutes and then come back to the rocks in the foreground. 